Hello beautifuls, this is Aron here and welcome back to seduce me too as I bite my cheek that hurts. But we are here starting off with the sexual atmosphere. <laughs> Within seconds he melted into the kiss and pant panted against my lips. Hot, right? Making me moan and reply at the sound. He tightened his grip around me as he walked backwards towards the bed. When his legs hit the side of the mattress, he sat down and allowed his hands to roll my back. I pulled away from the kiss ever so slowly, enjoying every moment that I was still connected to his lips before letting out a small sigh. I was pretty sure I had made myself clear, but I gave him a softly spoken demand. Uh, okay, um, I, I don't want to go to bed yet. <laughs> Eric stared up, stood up at me before licking his lips and slowly running his hands under my shirt and up my back. Tingle shot up my spine and his, as his fingers ran, o uh, ran over my bare skin, a shuddering moan escaping my lips. As my princess commands. It's so cute, princess. <laughs> I felt Eric gently lift my shirt up and I lifted my arms for him to fully remove it from my body before he tossed it to the side. The cool air hitting my skin made me shudder as Eric pulled me back in for another heated kiss. Damn his hands from harassing my body, he knew what spots to caress, making me buck my hips against his and tighten my hold on him. When I felt his smirk against my mouth, I softly bit onto his lower lip, telling him silently not to play with me. I felt the warm sensation of his enthrallment invade my body, causing me to cuddle closer against his chest and softly grind his hip grind my hips on his hips against his and meat. His enthrallment was part of our foreplay, adding ten times her pleasure to our sex. I knew that he poured every ounce of his love for me into our lovemaking. Every time we had sex was just another confession of true love between us. It wasn't just to feed hunger and desire. It became one of many ways we showed our love to each other. It was only a it was only yeah, it was only a benefit that he was an incubus, a natural master of sex. Every touch made me tremble and every kiss on my skin made me swoon and melt in his arms. He knew how to make me moan, how to make me crave him, how to make me shiver with ecstasy. I had been surprised to learn I was his first and his only with how talented he was. Soon it wasn't just my shirt that was removed, I just now remembered I was his first. Oh, that's super cute. For my body, every article of clothing he and I wore ended up scattered throughout the room, unnoticed and uncared for. The only thing we cared about was each other and the pleasure we gave each other on our bed. We made sweet and passionate love rocking to the rhythms of our hearts and our desire for each other. Every moan I made he matched it in kind. Every breath I took, Eric found a way to make it heavier and hotter. My nails and fingers dug into his shoulders and back in pure ecstasy as he continued to drive, in, drive into me over and over with his passionate love, pulling me higher and higher towards my limit. I could only tighten my legs around him, pull him to, pull him to more heated kisses, moan. Moan against his lips and desire. I'm getting confused now. When you both apexed, it was a blissful and fiery ride towards a peaceful and lo loving wave washing over both of our bodies. Lost in my pleasure, I could only cuddle into Eric's arms as he wrapped them around me and pulled me against his chest. His feather-like kisses peppered over my forehead, making me smile. Good night, my princess. I love you. No, That's so cute! We love you too, Eric. <laughs> I could only close my eyes and relish the warmth Eric gave me as I let my mind escape into dreamland. To my surprise, the child didn't return. I was a bit saddened, but I didn't let my thoughts linger on any longer. I had a peaceful dream with Eric wrapped around me through, all through the remainder of the night. As the morning came over, the other incubi essentially kidnapped their brother. Despite my minor protest, knowing that we had work to do on the wedding, the brothers were relentless. We're just stealing him for a bit. We'll return him later! But, but... We had to... Everything will be alright. You can finish working on your dress while we keep him out of the house. I mean, yeah, but... You could survive a day without your love slave. You're marrying him, after all. It's not like he'll be gone forever. Everything will be alright, princess. I promise. As soon as we're done with... Whatever they want to do, then I'll come straight home. I feel like they, uh, I don't know if they're planning something. I feel like this is a relatable situation in uh, everyone's lives when they're living with their partner. And then their friends try to take him away. Even though he's trying to probably surprise me or something. But, okay. I love you. 
I could barely make out him saying I love you too as he was dragged away by his brothers. As the front door closed, I could hear Eric being thrown over someone's shoulder, probably Sam's. I sighed before looking around the mansion since I was indeed alone. I had the chance to try and finish that, oh, finish, wow, find that spirit again. Well, I had not run away the first time. I quickly rushed to the backyard looking around for it. It was much brighter, yes, but perhaps the spirit was still there. Despite not being able to find it, I scoured the entire mansion in hopes of meeting the orb again. It almost became a game of hide-and-seek, only I didn't know if the orb was hiding or was gone. After a straight hour of looking around, I gave up. The orb was nowhere to be found, and I was certain I wouldn't meet it again. I could only let out a sigh at the thought, but I shook my head to forget about it at last, as I dropped my fork. It had given me a moment with my love, so I was grateful. I went back into my room and flopped onto my bed, not really sure what to do. I could have organized what I was going to wear with my dress, but I really didn't want to pull my dress out of the garment bag it was in. Staring at the ceiling, I felt my eyelids slowly get getting heavy, and soon I was letting my sudden drowsiness take hold of me. What was happening? Why did I feel like sleeping? It was close to noon, or was it past noon? I somehow couldn't remember anymore. I allowed myself to fall asleep, blaming the search and the wedding dress. A wedding stress that lingered in my mind for tiring me out. My body floated in the darkness, met once again by a soft and peaceful lullaby. This nap was perfect, and I definitely deserved it. My body felt comfortable, and my thoughts were lulled into a quiet hum that accompanied the lullaby in the, in the air. The only thing that would have made it better was Eric. As if my dream wanted to please me, an image of Eric appeared in my mind. He smiled at his heart pulling smirk at me and I felt myself become warm and fuzzy just from his gaze. As he floated over me flo floated over to me, I became entranced in his eyes. My voice wouldn't come out despite wanting to say his name, but I wrapped my arms around his neck and pulled him close to me. He leaned into my embrace, ghosting his lips over mine teasingly. Was Dream Eric trying to seduce me in my own dreams? I pressed forward wanting to kiss him. We didn't make a sound, but let our kiss relay our love for each other between our lips. My heart pounded in my chest as he wrapped his arms around my waist and pulled me even closer to him. It was strange. He felt so real in my arms. I combed my fingers through his hair, feeling the pink copper strands on top of his head, yet this was a dream. I knew it was a dream. His arms gently ran along my back and waist, not daring to go below it, but making wonderful shivers run up my spine with each stroke. I really liked this dream and tightened my hold on Eric, letting him know that I enjoyed his touch. Eric eventually pulled away from the kiss and smiled down at me, running a hand over my hair and caressing my cheek. I stared up at him lovingly, feeling a soft swell in my lips from the kiss we had shared. And I'm going to pause real quick because my dad's calling me. Alright, we're back. Hopefully everything's situated. Well, everything's not situated right now after the call. Now I'm texting a bunch of people to try to help me out. I'm trying to get a car. And it's really hard because cars are expensive. So I might end up just buying a car at an auction. But I'm asking some people that have been at auctions like, Hey, do you know how much is like the maximum of a car? So I could tell my dad since... You know, parents usually save up money for their children to go to college. My mom kind of saved up money for me to get a car when I actually get my license. So hopefully the cars aren't that expensive because my dad's like not wanting to give us the whole amount of money since he thinks we might splurge on stuff. So he's been like giving us money here and there. So hopefully it's not super expensive because I don't want a like, super expensive car because I have to pay my own insurance and everything. Uh, I don't want that. Anyway, let's continue on because we're here for Eric. Alright, uh, did I read this part? I think so. What I didn't expect was him slowly leaning down and planting a soft kiss over my chest, just over where my heart was. I stared unsure of why he did such a thing. As my heart began to feel warm and lighter, I let a silent sigh out of my throat, feeling the pleasure of its sensation. Eric slowly backed away and disappeared, but I continued to feel the warmth over my heart sweetly emanate through my veins like a slow adrenaline rush. What was happening to me? Tingles ran across every nerve in my body, making me shiver in delight. Whatever this was, I liked it. Soon the warmth lulled me into a peaceful hum and I curled into myself, wrapping my arms around my body from the comfort it brought. I thought at peace while my body felt like it was embracing the warmth enveloping it. It was strange, but I accepted the resentful feeling. Restful feeling, not resentful. <laughs> From the... 
I really hate that noise. It sounds so yucky. Then dar darkness, dark laughter evaded in the air, breaking the lullaby and making a sudden cold feeling wash over my skin. Before I could react, however, a large and deep pain invaded my chest, almost like a sword stabbing all the way through my body. I could not see anything of the sort as I looked down at my chest, but my hands tightened over where the pain had erupted from. What was happening? I coughed, feeling a blood splat out of splash out of my mouth and drip down my lips. I gasped for air, disgusted at the coppery taste in my mouth. Ill, but I was unable to break out of the illusion I needed to wake up. The stabbing pain ripped through my insides as if the invisible blade in my chest unsheathed itself from my torso, and I felt a second stab through my stomach, more blood gushing from my mouth. Someone help me! I felt my body slowly start to shut down, and was I dying in my own dream? Why couldn't I not wake up? Cold waves ran through my nerves, numbing my body as if I was indeed slowly dying. As blood dripped from my chin, I felt lightheaded in the darkness. But an almost violent shake broke me, up, broke me from my dream, forcing me to physically open my eyes. Princess! I gasped for air, no longer able to taste blood or feel pain. I was back in my room, staring at Eric's concerned face as he held my shoulders. I shuddered from the experience, unable to forget the feeling of being stabbed in my own dream. Eric, however, had saved me. Love, what happened? You were thrashing around and... I didn't let him finish. I grabbed Eric's body and slammed myself into his chest, happy to no longer be trapped in the dream and thankful that he woke me from it. Eric wrapped his arms around me and gently rubbed my back, soothing me as I began to cry into his shoulders. Did you have a nightmare? That would be a horrible nightmare if you're, like, dying in your own dream and tasting blood. That's real nasty. It was terrible. I was being attacked by something in the darkness. I couldn't do anything about it. Shh. It's okay now. You're safe. I'm right here. I could only nod as Eric rocked me back and forth and comforting me. It may have been a dream, but I was still mortified by it. It seemed almost too real to be just a dream. I didn't want to think about it anymore. I didn't want to remember my rem remember the dream, especially how horrible it was. I was supposed to be getting mentally ready for my wedding, not having nightmares about dying. Eric kissed over my head and face, trying to soothe my sadness. He wiped away my tears and continued to hold me close until I was calm and relaxed. I tried to reassure myself that it was a dream. It was just a stupid dream, just a nightmare. Eric gently pulled away, not releasing me from his arms, and looked down at me with a soft frown. I'm sorry that I left. I should have been here, making sure that you had good dreams. It's alright. I shook my head. Eric needed to spend time with his brothers. It was important enough to him that he let himself be dragged away by them. No, no, it's alright. I'll be fine. Are you sure, Princess? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Totally, I mean, it's just a nightmare of me dying, tasting blood. I had to shake this off. I didn't know what was going on, but now Eric was here and could be with me in any case anything else happened. After I had finally calmed down, Eric told me about what the boys had done. They took ca took Eric to a cafe deep in downtown in Chicago, just wanting to have a brother-to-brother -brother talk with him. I was happy he got to spend time with them, but Eric had practically rushed home to return to me. The dream did not appear again that night. Eric used his power to enter my dreams and kept me safe from anything that I tried to hurt me. And thankfully, nothing did. However, there was a strange feeling in my gut that didn't sit right with me. For some reason, Eric's comfort didn't make me feel okay. It was as if I didn't want him to be in my dreams. My heart knew this was a problem, but I was unsure of how to respond to this new feeling. Slowly, as the days passed by and our wedding approached, the feelings became more aggressive. Soon, I was becoming ir irritated more easily. I became angry at the smallest things, the steps he took, the things he would wear, the looks he gave me, or what I assumed he gave me. No, Eric, I don't want to do anything right now. Love, I didn't say any. You're looking at me with those, those sex eyes again. Sex eyes? <laughs> what? I swear, I wasn't doing anything of the sort. You're doing it now, apparently. I couldn't control the words that were flying out of my mouth. Something was wrong, but I continued to speak cruelly towards Eric. My heart was... At odds with my mind, and I didn't know why I was doing it, but I continued my barrage. Love, what is going on? What's going on? You are what's. What I'm the sorry. hell? What? What happened to his eyeballs? Hello? I felt Eric's thumb take over my body, forcing me to go weak in the knees and kneel out in surprise. My mind stopped thinking about attacking Eric, and my heart felt entirely relieved that the urge was gone. Eric gently wrapped his arms around me, being sure to keep his arms away my 
arms around my shoulders and rocked with me, trying to calm me down. Love, are you having doubts? Oh. No. No, I'm not. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what's going you on. You swear you're not having doubts about us? I promise. I was able to speak the truth under his spell. It was strange. It was like I was under a curse when I wasn't under his enthrallment. Somehow despising every little thing Eric did, yet I knew it wasn't true. I loved everything about him, but my mind wouldn't agree. I gripped Eric's shirt, wanting to stay close and show my true feelings for him. Listen to me, okay? I love you so much. If you have any doubts on us getting married, then please, please just tell me. I don't know what's going on in your beautiful head. Aww, our beautiful head. <laughs> I love you too, I really, really do. I don't know what's happening to me. I totally forgot what happened to me anyway. I, it made no sense. Why did I despise Eric? Yeah, I love him. My mind, heart, and body were at odds with each other, and I wasn't sure what to do. And this is where we're going to stop. Because, you know... Yay! Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Stay beautiful, and I hope you guys are going to enjoy Eric's point of view. I, I'm kind of happy because, you know, the whole James thing didn't work out with me. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.